Anyways, um, I'll cover this quickly. So holding trades, right? Now, the source, I think, anyway, I think, of, of, of holding or not being able to hold trades can come down to several factors, right? One of them, for me, anyway, I'm going to talk about my, maybe my, my personal experience and remembering back to when I had the same issue, right? Um, I think, for me, one of the main things was risk, right? And risking too much, right? Risking way too much. So let me break this down on, on, on any particular trade. So um, the first thing is, is if, for example, you was to risk a penny on that trade, yeah, on any trade, if you lose that penny, how would you feel? How would everybody feel? How would anyone feel about losing a penny? <laughs> Not bad at all, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't even bat an eyelid. That's exactly you. You wouldn't feel bad, right? Oh, okay. So let's let's do a bit more of an of of, of an extreme example, right? Let's say, for example, you lost. Uh, I'll do ten k, right? Ten thousand pounds on a trade. Yep. Yeah? How would you feel on that one? <laughs> exactly, Ken. Right? Exactly. Tears start coming to your eyes. You know what I mean? So, well, depending obviously the, the, what what ten thousand pounds represents in terms of you know your risk percentage, but just looking at the amount, right, and what the amount represents to you, right? Right. Exactly. Stop. Stop trading. Right. But ten percent, ten thousand pounds could represent if it represents zero point one percent of your account. It's still, again, a, a bit, you know, it only represents 0.1%. But, you know, you think to yourself what you could do with that £10,000, right? What it could buy you, a nice car, put, you know, pay off your mortgage, whatever it is, right? So the point I'm trying to make is this, is that there's an, there's an emotional attachment to what you're risking and the amount you're risking, yeah? Even though generally I say 0.1%, yeah, on a trade, um, a lot of traders, A, don't do it, and B, they're not, they're not ultimately comfortable with, um, with, with their, what they're risking. They think they are, but they're not. And if you're not, it will manifest itself, and it can manifest itself in the fact that you're, you're not accepting, accepting of the loss. You're accepting of that loss. You couldn't care less, right? But if you lose that one, it's going to hurt. Right. So as soon as prices start to go against you on a, on a penny trade, uh, you're just like, whatever. As soon as prices start to go against you on a £10,000 trade or $10,000 trade, right, you're going to, you know, you, like, like uh, you know, can put, you're literally going to start, you know, tears are going to start coming to your eyes, right? You're going to start crying, right? It's supposed to be eyes and tears. But, you know, that's basically what it is. So you need to... And this is what this is this is how I combated it is is understand the risk and also I'm going to extrapolate this right so let's say it's somewhere between that amount right and then just work your way up from there right you say okay penny two p three p ten p whatever it is and it might seem like a, a thing where it's like well do you know what if I risk a penny I'm never going to get rich right? It's quick. And here's another thing as well, is understanding that the, 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 the timeline, right? The timeline of you, you know, making money, whatever external pressures you've put on yourself, whether it's, um, you know, you, 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 you need the money, you have put this, you know, you're trying to complete a prop firm deadline in a month's time and all that kind of stuff, right? You have to trade uh, uh, stress free. You have to not think about the money because ultimately it's about the process. If you can't turn, if you can't make money trading a penny, then you're damn sure not going to make any money trading 10,000 pounds. Yeah. Because it's just about percentages. It's about scaling up. Yeah. If you can't turn 1p to 3p, yeah, you're not going to turn 10,000 pounds to, you know, 30,000 pounds. It's just not possible. 
So don't scoff and don't start going, oh, well, I'm never going to make any money. Because if you can't do it there, you can't do it on this. Yeah. As was told to me, if you can't handle peanuts, you're definitely not going to handle coconuts. Yeah. So look at trading and trading psychology as a long term, you know, uh, endeavor. It's a skill. It's one of the hardest things you're ever going to do. Right. Ever, ever, ever going to do in life. Many people give up and you know the statistics. Right. But now I'm going to extrapolate that. Yeah. And not just say on one trade. So what I mean by that is if you lose one trade, cool, that's fine. Yeah. But how would you feel if you lost 10 trades in a row? If you had a 10 trade losing streak? Yeah. Meaning that if you lost, if you were risking, you know, one P, right? If you lost 10 trades in a row, which means that you would lose 10 pence, how would you feel? Probably, you know, you wouldn't feel any weight, right? You'd just be like, whatever. It is what it is. It's only 10 pence. Yeah. Obviously, 10 pence could be a lot to some people, but generally, you know, unless if, if 10 pence is a lot to you, then you really should not be trading at all, right? You should not be trading. So, um, so the point is, is that 10 losing trades, let's just call it a 10 losing trades, right? Which is definitely possible. I've had a 15 trade losing streak. I've, I've had an 11 trade losing streak, right? In the past. And it happens. It's not often, not at all, right? But it can happen. Now, if you lose 10 trades in a row, yeah, this is really how you should measure your risk. If you lose 10 trades in a row, yeah, and it equals up to 10 pence, are you okay with that? If the answer is yes, then trading at one pence per trade is what you should be doing. Yeah, you should think about your risk in terms of how much you will lose if you go on a losing streak, not how much you will lose on one particular trade or two particular trades. Yeah, divide 10 by whatever the risk is, right? So if you're happy to lose, if you say, all right, then I'm going to lose. If I lose 10 trades, I'm going to, you know, and I'm happy to lose, I don't know, like let's say, for example, 5% of my capital. Yeah, 5% of my capital on 10 losing trades, then what you're saying is, is that if I lose 10 in a row, yeah, my every individual trade should be at least 0.5%. And that is where, you know, you start when it comes to understanding what you should be risking and why maybe you're not being able to hold trades because if you're fearful of losing, if, if you know, I, I, I don't know if you who, who uh, put this question in, but if you're fearful of losing, um, you know, trades and you can't, you, 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 you want to snatch profits too soon, um, and especially still in the face of knowing that price generally does go in your favor, but you're still not confident enough, it can come down to the fact that you're risking way too much on that trade. There are other factors as well. Yeah. You haven't accepted, you know, the, 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 the loss. You haven't understood the law of large numbers, you know, and the fact that every trade is random, a great trade, an A1 setup. Yeah. The perfect setup can win. Right. I mean, can lose, I should say. Right. You can have a, you can have everything line up. Yeah. Perfect trade. And it can still lose. You can have the worst trade in the world and it can win. You can just place a random trade right now. Just press buy or sell without even knowing what's on a price chart. And it's 50-50. Yeah. Terrible trade, random trade, but it can win or it can lose. But we're not judging our trades over one or two trades. We're judging our trades over 100 trades and 100 perfect trades as well. Or high, very, very, very high standard, high quality trades. Yeah. That's what we're judging ourselves over. Not just one or two trades. By the way, is the person who wrote this, who, who asked the question about holding trades, are they in are they in the room? Are they in here? If you are, let me know. Speak up. Yeah. Anyways, so 
understanding risk, your risk, yeah, is really important to holding to 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 being able to hold trades and accepting losing trades, not just one, but over a losing streak, 10, 15, 20, you know, trades. And it might sound like, well, what the hell? The strategy doesn't work if I lose 20 times, but there are strategies that you lose more than you win and that are still profitable because it depends on, you know, your risk reward ratio. If you're, if you've got, you know, a, a three to one uh, type, you know, trading strategy or four to one type trading strategy, then really you only need a, a win rate of maybe 20 to 25% um, or above that in order to be profitable, right? So some strategies aren't always about uh, winning win rates. It doesn't really matter about win rates. It matters about when you win, do you win, you know, more than you lose and to what degree? Great risk reward. So I think I wrap that up. I don't want to go into it so much more depth, but I think on the surface level, I think, and I think that person, if they're not in here, um, if you're still having problems after this, then, you know, we'd have, we'd have to have a maybe a one-to-one -one, uh, session with you to kind of unpick that but um i'm hoping that that does clarify things does anyone else have any questions on that by the way 